Good morning, everyone. Today is a, a fantastic game from the Dortmund Super GM Tournament 2013 with the white pieces, uh, Katie Neidich, and with the black pieces, Igor Kenkin, rated 26.05 at the time. Game started out E4 from Mr. Neidich, C6 from Kenkin, Carol Khan Specialist, D4, D5, E5. If you watch a lot of my videos, you know I enjoy the white side of the advanced variation. I do enjoy going over these closed uh, games, such as the French defense advanced variation also. Here, instead of uh, the typical bishop f5 uh, in this line, getting the bishop out of the pawn chain early, we see another uh, critical variation, which is c5. This line right here is uh, Grandmaster Igor Kenkin's uh, specialty. So if you are interested in this particular line, I suggest that you study uh, his games from the black side. This is his uh, bread and butter right here, C5. So always interesting to see uh, games uh, by specialists in the particular variation. Knight of three by uh, Knightich. And now C takes D4 is played. Another move order is just Knight C6 here, keeping the tension a little bit longer. But... By transposition, you're getting to the um, uh, actual uh, position in the game. So knight of three, c takes d4 here. Knight takes d4. In this same tournament, um, Kenkin had played this line against uh, it's black against Andraken. Andraken had played uh, queen d4. Queen takes d4 here. But here we have knight takes d4. And now knight c6. And now c4 here by knightich. And now e6 by Kenkin. Um, d takes c4 is possible, but you end up in an inferior endgame. Right, here's a sample line, and you notice that um, white has more space advantage in the center, and also black has that isolated pawn on the C file. And so you have one of these positions, right, that might be drawn, you know, theoretically, if you put two engines together, but practically uh, it's only white really here that has chances to uh, uh, make something happen. Okay, so it's probably not the kind of game that uh, you want to go into uh, is black. All right, it's pretty uh, simple, straightforward, forward play for um, for white here. So D takes C4 is a little uh, premature, although playable. Another option, of course, you see the pawn here on E5 hanging. Is uh, knight takes E5. And then after C takes D5, it's not so um, it's it's not so straightforward. Just capturing the pawn on D5 and going uh, up an extra pawn for Black. If it were that easy, then White would not be able to play this variation. Uh, period. So, for example, after Queen takes D5, Knight C3, uh, White starts developing a dangerous initiative. It's already a uh, difficult, um, you know, difficult question as to where the Queen can be uh, safely uh, placed. Okay, and the uh, white pieces come out uh, rather rapidly in this position. So this is no good, and this is why you don't really see this move played here. So instead of queen takes d5, knight f6 is possible. Um, in the same spirit of your Scandinavian defense, where the variation knight f6 is played, instead of exposing the queen to fire, knight f6 is played with the idea of using a... Um, you know, lesser piece to recapture the pawn. Play can go bishop b5, check. Bishop d7, knight c3. And let's say a6, bishop e2. Queen c7. Queen b3. And as you can see, it's not as easy for uh, black just to gang up on that pawn. And since this pawn provides such a, a nice space advantage uh, for white, 
in the center here, it's difficult for him to complete for Black to complete his development. For instance, with moves a simple move like e6, this almost forces him to uh, fiend kettle uh, in this position. Again, that's just a sample line. So, for instance, G6. Knight drops back. Queen D4. Bishop F4. And you see the double attack on the knight here. Knight E8. Okay, so... Bishop is protecting, the knight drops back. H3. Rook C8. And again, it becomes very difficult uh, in this position for black due to that space advantage on the uh, in the center for white. And then you see this attack right here. Knight d6. And then tactics start uh, entering into the game. For instance, bishop takes a6 with this double attack on this knight here. So the point is of showing those two variations is that the pawn capture in the center for black is, is uh, premature. Trying to, trying to get greedy and grab e5 or uh, playing... D take C4. And this is why development is a recommended, um, you know, continuation. To keep moving forward in the position, building the position. Okay, right now, Black's not interested in just in uh, grabbing pawns at this point. Because he just he comes into uh, difficulties. So E6, Knight C3, Bishop C5. Knight it captures, knight takes c6, b takes c6, and now he exchanges in the center. All right. And c takes d5, and all is well and lovely here. e takes, e takes is a possibility. Okay, although c takes... Uh, aesthetically, it just looks better because if you notice, now you have uh, three separate pawn islands after e takes d5. Okay, so sample line e takes d5, bishop d3, knight e7, castles, bishop a5, uh, excuse me, f4, f5, knight a4, bishop d4, bishop f4, castle, and rook c1. And black is, you know having some long-term going to have some long-term issues with those uh hanging pawns but he's not lost but you have to give the nod here uh to white due to the pawn structure you know the prospects in the open files the c file uh is a little bit suspect for black okay so that's probably not a position black you know wanted to go in you know in the uh, coming out of the opening. So C takes D5 seems much uh, more natural. The main uh, problem here, uh, if we want to call it a problem here, is just the space advantage in the center um, that um, that white holds. All right, That's very annoying uh, for black. Another thing that we have to uh, be mindful of is this 2 to 1 queen side majority that uh, white holds. Right, very good end game prospects having the space in the center. Good end game prospects. All right, um, black is very solid, but it seems like white has all the uh, the cards in his hand. Nevertheless, black really has no structural weakness here. Okay, and um, so even though he doesn't have great winning chances, uh, it's hard to to uh, chop down the white position. So let's see what happened. So at this time, Arcady Knightage played a powerful move B4 here. Okay, at the time, uh, it was a novelty. Of course, the basic right idea is that the pawn cannot be captured because of this check here. Of course, 
uh, Ken Ken knew this, all right? Previously, move like natural move like Bishop D3 was played by uh, Nispiano against Kenkin. The game continued in this fashion. And this game wind up being drawn in about eight more moves. All right, not too much for uh, Black uh, to worry about here. <clears throat> so B4 at the time is a novelty. And of course, um, what it does is it poses uh, Black a serious question about what to do with the dark square bishop. Obviously, he can't capture the pawn. So what do you do with it? Well, he brought the bishop back to B6. If he brings it to um, B7, um, excuse me, E7, then it's he kind of takes away this nice square for his knight to uh, develop to. All right. So now black doesn't have a good square uh, for the knight. Okay. And for example, at the rook B1, very difficult for uh, black here to castle even. So, so for instance, knight h6, you can just snatch the knight off. Bishop b5, bishop d7, castle, and uh, again, good position here for white. So, bishop d7, bishop b2, let's say queen c7, knight b5, queen takes e5, there you go, take the pawn, nobody cares, queen e4, and castle again. Um, this is a good position uh, for white here. So he plays bishop b6. Right? Bishop b6 keeps the option of e7, coming to e7 open for the knight. And this is the move that he wants to do. Come here, they have the option of going here, here, here. The problem is, is that with this pawn on um, e5, well, you'll see. At the knight b5, now you can see the obvious idea of just coming here now with the uh, with the knight and giving check, which is very uncomfortable for a uh, black in his position. All right. Ken can play what a lot of people would play, bishop c7. After all, right, keep the uh, keep the knight uh, from coming to d6. All right. It was later found that probably one of White's best continuations, excuse me, Black's best continuations probably is Queen H4. And things get double-edged here. All right. Of course, allowing Knight D6, check, King E7. And then you get some fireworks in the position here. This is just like a sample. And here, you know, there's um, a lot of double-edged play going on right here. Okay. Actually, at the King D1, we can even probably say black a little better. But, of course, white can improve upon that. So, for instance, instead of jumping in with the uh, Knight D6 first, you can play Queen f3 first and now if queen takes b4 check here then just uh, insert bishop queen e4 going to the end game knight d6 king f8 and then bishop b5 and that's better uh, for white so the point is is that this move pose pose uh, great difficulties uh, for black um for kenkin here all right he did not want to allow this check and after all, psychologically, it's a blow to the Karakon player because usually the Karakon player is trying to stay as solid as possible, keep his pawn structure pristine, and uh, hopefully uh, get to an end game where he can utilize, you know, his good pawn structure and, um, you know, squeeze the opponent uh, down the road. You know, usually Karakon player is trying to avoid 
like these um, wild um, tactical uh, melees in the position. So allowing a move like knight d6 is kind of against the Kahokan player's DNA, so to speak. All right, he's looking for solidity. Um, you know, he's looking for stability in the position. He doesn't want to have this wild position where the king is, you know, running around the board, at least until the queens are swapped off. All right. So you can understand psychologically why he would make a move like bishop c7. Bishop b2. Of course, after making the move bishop c7 also loses time. Okay, which white uses to his advantage and plays bishop b2. Knight e7, bishop d3. And look at the beautiful uh, line uh, setup of the white bishops here. A6, sad move for black to have to make. If castle, then uh, queen c2 with the double attack here, as you can see on the h pawn and the bishop at the same time. This is why he has to do h h6. He doesn't want to play a move like h6, uh, excuse me, like a6, because he's just giving up the bishop here. Perhaps even better was bishop b8, but again, that's another move with the bishop. He preserves the bishop here, but then he has to shamefully block the rook in on a8. And, uh, you know, it's just not looking good. So he just plays a6, parts with the bishop here, queen takes c7, castle. And notice how easy the play is for white, you know, right? So now he has the opportunities to attack everywhere on the board. Right, he has a space advantage on the king side. So there's all type of opportunities for moves like queen g4, attacking uh, the g7 square. Uh, if black castles, you know, moves like queen h5 and threatening mate. You know, plans like f4, moving the rook up, etc. All type of attacking opportunities on the king side. And then he also has the 2 to 1 uh, pawn majority on the queen side. So... Later on, if it you know things get swapped off down the C file or whatever, and Black is able uh, to weather the uh, king side attack, he still has to worry about the um, uh, possibility of White creating a passer on the uh, queen side. So White is definitely better here, okay? And to and he has the bishop pair to boot, okay? Not only has the bishop pair. Right now, Black's bishop is is a bad bishop, right behind all of these light pawns. So something has gone ter terribly wrong for the uh, specialists in the Carol Khan. Bishop d7, <clears throat> right? He wants to take care of this bad piece. And now Queen g4 was played. Another option is a4. Again, address it addresses this right here. And it um it moves up this uh, pawn majority. Okay, so that it prevents this move though, also which is good. But again, black excuse me, white has a lot of options. Again, like I said, he could play on either side of the board. So here he just decides to go after the king, castle. Rook fc1 again. A4 is an option, it's keeping keeping this from happening. <clears throat> and now he does play a4. And this is the type of game that you love if you're white. Again, you have you just playing all across the board. You right, you're controlling everything. Now you have space advantage on the king side, queen side. So knight g6 was played, rook c5, queen b8, queen d4, rook c8. Rook a5 ganging up on the a6 pawn. Queen b7. G3. Little security measure there. H6. B5. A takes. A takes. Rook takes. Rook takes. And now he just has a clear passed pawn. Rook a8. Rook a6. Queen c8. H4 switching 
<laughs> to the other side of the board. Now, at this point, White is getting greedy here. He can just play uh, Rook A7. Right? That That's, uh, you know, with the idea of just advancing. That wins, too. But H4, Rook B8, H, I'm sorry, B6 now. Queen C6. And now he plays Rook A7. Bishop E8. Rook A6, the old tactic of repeating moves, right? It's probably some time time issues. Bishop D7. H5, again, switching the attack on to the other side of the board. And now Bishop A3. Okay, and going to D6. And again, notice the theme of of using that square. D6, where there was, it was the knight. And now you see the bishop utilizing the same square. This is why... Um, space is is important in chess. You have to be careful when you're giving up space to your to your opponent, okay? Because either, you know sometimes sometimes it seems like you can um, you know you know just uh, not really worry about it. Like you know you give up the space and you think that uh, it's not going to be a factor, but then as the game goes on, it's still a factor, and you can see that this. Right here, there's no way, the no remedy for, uh, there's no remedy for black in this situation to, uh, to deal with it. At least before he had the dark square bishop, and okay, he wound up giving up the bishop, but now what? Right now, there's no remedy. Bishop c8, rook a7, queen takes b6, powerful move, rook takes f7. And this is all based on the um, bad coordination of the black pieces. Okay, with this bishop being on the, uh, still at home. That's what makes this uh, combination possible. Rook takes f7. King takes f7. Of course, if queen takes d4, then rook takes f8 mate. And that's what I was saying. The bad coordination of the pieces down here. Back rank is weak. Notice that this light square bishop has this diagonal covered. Bishop on a3 supports the rook. So after king takes f7, queen f4 check. King e8, queen takes f8. And the king just gets walked walk down um, to his fate. Bishop b5 check. This is a deflection uh, sacrifice. And the idea of here is to move the queen. Yeah, I'll just show you. Moves the queen away from the defense of the d6 square. And then after king e8, it mate with the bishop. Remember, all combinations, no matter how many layers, always end. Very simple tactics. Yes, it is, mate. And the other idea is, again, we have a nice uh, epaulette, mate, if uh, king to c7. As you can see here, bishop d7, queen uh, to d7, mate. All right. So after, after that game, um, I'm sorry, after that move, uh, King Kim was forced to resign. So, very, very powerful game uh, by Nidich. Uh Let's just, like, summarize uh, real quick uh, what we saw, like, the main themes in the game. And one was, uh, one of the main themes in the game was definitely this novelty at the time, which is, which is the move uh, B4. Very powerful move, and this is kind of where uh, things got tough uh, for black here. Not really able to decide on what to do uh, with his bishop in this game. So he had chose bishop uh, b6, which allowed this idea to come on come on the board. Um, the second major theme. I believe after that was was just the uh, the idea of this uh, two to one majority on the uh, queen side, 
and also the idea of black uh, excuse me white able to use this square uh, all throughout the game all right so he established the space advantage early but he never um, relinquished the use of that square throughout the game um, another very important theme that I want to uh, talk about just real quick is the fact that white was able to utilize uh, the entire board right in his attack if you notice uh, he kept switching attacks like he would make a move on the queen side then he would switch to the king side and he just kept going back and forth and eventually uh, he wound up playing rook takes f7 so he was moving the whole game um, you know at least a uh, major part of the game right you see this advancing on the queen side with this uh, pass pawn and then you see him switch over with h4 back to the queen side right back to the king side and he was just so it's just a beautiful game just showing um you know what you can do with the space advantage and also how you can play chess all across the board and you can see right there how he sacrifices his pawn right so finally right you he, he creates a, a pass pawn he nurtures the pawn up from a baby he becomes a mighty pass pawn the pawn looks like it's about the queen or at least um you know do something great and he sacrifices it right and he does that for the mating attack on the king with the powerful move rook takes f7 right so all of this back and forth back and forth ends in a beautiful uh king hunt which ended uh decisively and this is the moment where uh, king can actually resign was on bishop b5 because of course he can see the mate at this point so i hope you enjoyed that game please check my links below donate to my channel um also there's uh dvds and or books related to the opening that we discussed in this game today which happened to be the uh carol khan uh defense so check those uh, links out below and uh i'll see you guys on the next video